Hey there friends, welcome back to the channel. My name's Alex Lokes and I have a new camera review for you. And when I say new, I mean new. And I'm of course talking about the Reto Ultra Wide and Slim, a modern copy of the original trash cam, the cult classic, the Vivitar Ultra Wide and Slim. But as always, let's kick it back to the studio. I can go over the history of the camera, give you a tour of it and a brief overview of the functionality. And I will meet you right back here. The idea of a trash cam or scamera is not a new one. These are unique subvariants of your average toy camera. Some are good, others completely live up to their moniker. These cameras often can be found under brand names that were once big, Argus, Ansco, Bell and & Howell, and many others. Some will even play off of bigger names like Olympus becomes Olympia. And this is where Sunny Industries comes into play. First established in 1972, this Hong Kong based manufacturer with factories on the Chinese mainland produced these cheap plastic cameras. They produced 110 cameras, 35 millimeter, and even a 126 camera. They would change their name to Sun Pet Industries in 1980. And they were relatively unknown until of course the mid 1990s when they came out with this strange little 35 millimeter point and shoot called the Ultra Wide and Slim. This was marketed under the brand name Vivitar and proved actually pretty capable for what it is. And thanks to the internet, it became a cult classic. Everyone who has listened to the Film Photography Project will remember the soundbite, ultra wide and slim. I can't do it the same. And the internet really helped solidify this. You have, you had in this time frame, you had Lamography making it big and people ate these cameras up. We don't actually know when production ceased. We're guessing at some time around 2017, but Japanese manufacturer Power Shovel began to make and market the ultra wide and slim under their Superheads brand name. Cameras like the Slim Black Devil. They actually produced this in more than just the original two-tone appearance that the Sun Pet version of the camera was made under. The problem was is that it was an imperfect copy of an imperfect camera. So one of the biggest problems was the body finish itself um, was known to collect dirt or become sticky. And the film advance system was wonky and would often jam if you put um, anything longer than a 24 exposure roll in, it would start jamming up around frame 26, 25. So, not exactly right. Again, we don't know when Power Shovel quietly discontinued the, um, the Slim Bell Act Devil. But this camera again hit the public consciousness in 2021 when another Hong Kong based maker got a hold of the original molds and produced it under the Reto name or the Reto Ultra Wide and Slim. This is a much more faithful duplicate. They sort of took the best of the power shovel version and the sun pet version. So the film advance system is much more true to the original and you have it available in multiple colors, but and in a much better exterior body finish. But for a camera this simple, it has a lot of cult value and even today, the original Vivitar still carries a high price, but the Reto is much cheaper and a fairly simple camera. So let's take a closer look at the camera itself. And here it is. As you can see, there is not much to this camera. It is barely wide enough to fit a standard 35 millimeter canister. And it, you, you can't really picture it, but there is absolutely nothing to this camera. In fact, if you didn't have it in your hand, you would forget you had it with you all together. So the camera itself on the front screen, you have your, you have this sort of side grip and you have your ultra wide lens. 
And one of the nice thing is, and I don't know if it shows up on camera, but it is actually, there is actually a bezel around the edge so that you don't accidentally do the old, uh, put your thumb over the uh, front lens element, um, which is a nice little thing. The grip is nice, but kind of useless. There is this lovely uh, wrist strap. I, I use this a lot when shooting it because I can just sort of let it dangle, haul it up, take the shot and be done with it. On the top, you have your frame counter. It is a bit hard to see, but it is there. And you have this nice big lozenge shaped um, shutter release. And it is a bit recessed. So again, you can kind of use it without really thinking. On the back, you have your viewfinder. Again, that's just an optical viewfinder. There's really nothing to it. You have your film advance here at the bottom and your back release. On the bottom, no tripod socket because, well, why would you need one? You have your rewind knob. This is actually the weakest part of the camera, so just be super careful when working with that. And then that's your sprocket release for rewind. Thankfully, it's a one push down and you are good to go. And that's it. There, there is, like the weight and the build, there is nothing to it. It's cheap, it's plastic, it feels cheap, it feels like plastic. So. Let's take a close look at the camera and how to actually use it. All right, so the camera itself has no batteries, nothing electronic on it, and very little metal. So function-wise, there isn't much to this. You don't set an aperture, you don't set a shutter speed, you don't set the focus. Everything is fixed in place and ready to go. Thankfully, the back latch is a separate one and you simply push it and it pops up on a slight spring. The film loads on the opposite side to what you're used to. So you put your film canister in here and you just load that on across, stick it in and start advancing away. Once you're in, you close, lock it up, push that back in and you advance until it stops, click, advance, click until you get to number one. Out in the field shooting it, you can actually use the viewfinder if you so desire to get a general idea. Personally, I just shoot it from the hip. Press, once you're done, you press and hold that, you rewind. You will hear a clicking noise, but that is actually just part of what it is. Just be careful with this uh, rewind knob. It is, again, as I mentioned, the weak point of the camera and it always feels like it's about to snap off. Well, that covers it. Let's get back out in the field. I can talk about my experience and show this thing in action. Okay, so I am here in downtown Oakville, Ontario, and I'm shooting Delta 100 in this, and I'll be developing this in Adox Rodinol at a 1 to 50 dilution. So let's see what I can capture. If you've never used a toy or a trash can before, the Reto Ultra Wide and Slim is either going to frustrate you or enthrall you. The first thing you're going to notice is how light the camera is. If you didn't see it in your hand, you wouldn't even know you had it with you. And on the plus side is that it doesn't take up any extra weight or room in your camera bag. It's a great knockabout camera that gives you something unique that a regular camera just doesn't have. On the bad side, every time you use it, you feel like you're going to break the camera. And if you drop it, good chance you're going to. First off, the film door is very hard to open and you really need to let gravity do its thing when opening it up. And the film rewind spool is very flimsy. In fact, every time I've used it, I feel like it's going to just snap off and that's it. The camera's done. But it hasn't yet. So you really do need to be careful with it as I usually am. The other problem is that the film advance wheel is a little rough and in cold weather, it really starts to dig into that skin. Gloves are nice, but the problem is once you have those gloves on, you have a greater chance of sticking your thumb or fingers in front of that lens. And with that 22 millimeter angle, it's just gonna capture everything. Personally, there is a viewfinder. I don't really use it. It gives you a basic idea of what's going on. I like to just swing it up, click the button, shoot it, 
and done. The one thing you do need to watch out for is when you're doing the rewind, it's gonna click. You're gonna sound like you're tearing through your sprockets, but don't worry, you're not. This is a simple, fun camera to use. The one thing you do need to watch out for is matching up the film speed to your lighting condition. Thankfully, that F11 aperture and that fixed 125th of a second does allow you to use 100 speed film in mixed light, but as soon as things start getting dimmer, you want to go up to either a 200 or a 400 speed film. But what truly makes the Reto Ultra Wide and Slim so special is the 22 millimeter focal length lens. So let's head back to the studio and talk a little bit more how this plastic two element lens can achieve such amazing sharpness while I finish off this roll of film. All right, I'll see you back where we started. The one thing that sets the um, Ultra Wide and Slim apart from most other cameras of this type is that it has a 22 millimeter lens. The only camera that is wider is the Lomo Apparat. A ultra wide lens, it's a two element lens, which sets it apart from other toy cameras because most of those use a single element plastic lens. This uses a two element plastic lens. And yeah, the optics are still plastic, but that's actually pretty good. Two element glass has been around for a while and it does render a much nicer scene. And there is another trick that the ultra wide and slim uses to help improve the optical quality. But in addition to that, it uses, it gives off an effect that most people look for in their toy cameras. And that is there is plenty of vignetting at the corners that is, it does sort of fade out to black and sort of frames your image. And before that, there is fall off where the further away from the center of your frame, the less sharp the image becomes, it sort of blurs out. Now I mentioned that there is a secret sauce to help keep the uh, images still sharp and not really completely reduced, but sort of negate the effects that a toy camera lens, the plastic two element glass will do. And that's actually inside the camera itself. And it's because the actual film plane is curved. There is a slight curvature to it. And I've seen this on pinhole cameras and um, other box cameras. And it seems like a cheat, but it actually works. And it's actually a really neat feature. And I'm really glad that they've included that. But the other nice thing is that because it is a fixed F11-ish lens, everything's in focus. You basically have from infinity down to one and a quarter meters. So this isn't one that you'd take out for like portrait work, but it might actually be fun for, uh, for groups. You won't get much in the way of out of focus elements again because of such a small aperture. And it's like I said, F11-ish. I really like it. I, I like that look, especially when carrying a camera like this. Don't expect a lot out of it. The images are sharper than what you'd expect. They aren't, they aren't perfect like from, from what you'd get from a full multi-element, multi-group glass lens. And there we have it, the Reto Ultra Wide and Slim. Probably the most faithful copy to the original Vivitar Ultra Wide and Slim that's available today. And What's really crazy is the prices that the original Ultra Wide and Slim are going for. Most are averaging about $75 Canadian, with some going above $100, which, you know, truly speaks to the insanity that surrounds a cult camera. So I personally wouldn't spend that much money for it, especially when for under 50 bucks, I can get a brand new build that is as close to the original as you can get today. It is certainly an improvement over the Superheads version and it comes in all those funky colors. So buy this camera new. You might not want to spend that sort of money, in which case you can probably borrow one first and try it out, see if you like it. I'm still trying to figure out if I want to keep mine. It's fun, it's not a camera I would use all the time, but thankfully it's small and lightweight that it I can just tuck it away in a box with some of my other point and shoot cameras and it doesn't take up any space. And I have it in case I want to use something other than a Holga. 
on World Toy Camera Day. But let me know in the comments below, what are your experience with the Vivitar, the Superheads, or the Reto Ultra Wide and Slim? Or what are your thoughts on trash cameras in general? Are they a waste of film? Or are they just fun? Personally, I find them fun, but everyone's opinions matters and I want to hear yours. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting that bell notification icon, and if you've liked this video, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it and I appreciate all the interactions I get on these videos. And that wraps it up. Until next time, my name's Alex Lokes. Get out there, stay safe. One man's trash is another man's treasure.